Welcome to another episode of the Creative Center Talk Show, and we have a great show today. Um, before we start our show, we're going to go around the table today and introduce who we have today. So we'll start to my left here, and who do we have? Edward. Tim. Hey, how you doing? It's Wyatt. Meta. I'm Tommy. Jackie, thank you very much. And lastly, Chris. Alrighty, cool. So, cool show today. Today we're going to talk about the in-house performance that we have later on in a, in a couple of weeks. It's coming almost, it's almost there. Um, it's the Valentine's Day in-house show. If you were, if you're the audience and you remember it, seeing it last year, it wasn't really open to the public, but uh, we did invite some counselors and some parents to come. And uh, if you have a feedback for that, the uh, the in-house Valentine's show, go ahead and just give us your feedback on that and let us know what you think about it. But today we're going to talk about that. Uh, we actually have a, a theme we're going by for the Valentine's Day sh in-house show called Love Letters. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, but we're going to talk about that. Um, and then we're also going to talk about our spring production on what we're doing. Uh, and everybody kind of has an idea, especially if you're a parent audience or counselor out there or if even just a friend of the Creative Center. Um, you kind of have an idea what we're going to do for spring, but uh, we kind of threw it out a little bit more in depth of what we're going to be doing, and we'll talk about that a little bit too. So let's go ahead and talk about um, the in-house Valentine's, uh, Valentine, Valentine's Day show. Any of you guys remember last year's Valentine's Day show? Were any of you guys part of that? No, I wasn't. Is there like this year, I am. Is there I'm, anything that you remember from last year? This year, though, I'm part of the Valentine's show. Uh, me and Courtney is going to be doing a mime act on stage, uh, Lady and the Tramp. How do you feel about doing the mime? You're doing a lot more with the mime. I'm having fun with it, um, and learning more about it is entertaining to me. And as I learn more of doing mime, better I will get. Yeah, that's good because that's, that's why we have like the talent show. Oh. The, the in-house uh, to explore that a little bit, you know. So if we have an opportunity for the mind to perform outside, then you guys are having a little bit more experience in it, you know. So. And since I'm taking improv, I'm going to start throwing that in into the My Mac too and see how it works. Yeah, yeah. Because um, a, a lot of improv, um, those skills that you develop, it actually works f perfect for mind because mime you have to really – uh, especially when you're interacting with the audience. I think that's going to be fun later on when you start doing some shows that interact with the audience and you're going to have to think on your feet. You know, like it was like that, that video we saw a while back where I think it was a guy driving, you know, saying, but he was interacting with uh, one of the audience members. So, but he has to react to what that person's reacting and that's all improv, you know. So um, that's cool. So you've, if you develop more um, the improv skills and abilities, that's definitely uh, make you a better performer as a mime performer. So. And maybe down the line we'll add more mimes to the act. Yeah. Too. So. Yeah, because that way if you and Courtney lead the charge in a way for mime performers and um, if anybody else is interested in doing mime, you can you kind of be the guide in a way, you know. Yeah, having Makayla and um, Emmy do mime, that was kind of fun with them. Mm -hmm. So they, they did a good job. Anybody else remember last year's show or any feedback? Uh, I know, Melissa, you're part of the show this year, right? Can you tell us a little bit what you're doing? I'm, I'm doing Lloyd and Me um, um, song, too. What song is it? you remember? Uh, uh, a love song. Love. Was it uh, from Wicked, right? Wicked. Yeah. How do you feel about doing that? I'm really happy, but I'm still at a time, but I love it, and I, I, I'm maybe a bad as you guys. Yeah. What's more easier to do, like the plays that we do or doing in-house shows? Heck, both. Both? You think they're both easy? Yeah. <laughs> you would think um, doing in-house uh, would be a little more easier. Um, but I think a lot of people actually get more nervous doing it in front of 
friends and family because if you're doing a show that's uh, for, for people that you don't know you're more relaxed i'm more that way if i'm doing a show for people i don't know um i'm more relaxed but if i'm doing it when i know friends and family are there uh i'm i get a little more more nervous you know i don't know if you guys feel this the same way when it comes to in-house and um doing like plays if you guys feel more nervous more than others so yeah i get i get more um nervous when i know people in the audience because um i think it's be i think it's because the um some of them will be r brutally honest with you and you're like you know kind of deal and especially if it's really good friends or family they'll be brutally honest with you kind of like mine yeah <laughs> like i know like if i do a performance and my wife sees it it's it's one of those things like i'm gonna hear it all the time especially if i mess up or something you know yeah um but if it's like again people that you don't know you're never gonna see again you don't have to really worry about hearing their their the, input yeah their <laughs> input a lot you know or their complaints about something you know but if it's somebody you do know They'll remind you. you know, yeah. I remember when you messed up that time or that didn't look good or whatever, you know. But then again, it can be good, too, because if you have good people that you know that really support what you're doing and they like what you're doing, uh, they're, they'll encourage you, you know, say, I like it. Can you do that again? I was remember last time you did that. That was fun. Uh, yeah, it makes me a better um, performer, actually, when they they criticize it as or critique it as I, I say yeah uh, my performance and i'm like okay i can do something better there so. yeah that's how you grow you know if you're um always wanting to hear people just telling you oh it was good it was good it was good um and you're afraid to hear the criticism um then you're not going to grow as a performer or even, even as an individual you know uh, if there's things in in your life that you know your personality or something that you know that uh, you're struggling with or something and you know if you you get some criticism from people that actually helps you grow better you know um as a person too so yeah i remember um doing uh, uh some sp some speeches that i used to do when i was younger and there was something where i was doing where um I wasn't give, I wasn't being like relatable to the audience, and a lot of people knew were starting to recognize that, especially close friends and family. And they were telling me, you know, like, you know, you weren't connecting with us. You know, we're connecting. I felt like you were away when you were speaking to us, when you were doing your presentations or something. You know, and that first time I heard that, I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I right away, I was like, uh, you don't know. Get away from me. Get away from me. But you know what? That actually affected me. Uh, my personality in a way because I was the type of person when I was younger I didn't like to look at people I didn't like to like 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 have face to face type um, like presentations or, or even conversations I just had that uh, hard time doing that but that was something I needed a breakthrough because if I didn't break free from that um, I wasn't gonna be able to do my presentation something like that so I had to take a step back and look at myself and say you know, that's right. That person's right. You know, I have to learn to look at people when I have conversations or when I'm doing presentations or shows, interact with the audience in a way. Because um, if I don't do that, then everything I do in the future, it's not going to, you're not going to see that. You know? Yeah. Um, when I first started doing the plays, um, I get a lot of ne kind of negative feedback and I would, human emotion would, uh, is takes over and you're mad. Yeah. At first you're like, what are they talking about? They don't know what they're saying. But then you realize, well, and then you think about it for a while and say, yeah, I did kind of mess up on that. I got to make that better. And so you go back and watch the movie because that's what I did was I'll buy the movie and watch it. And I'm like, uh, he was right. <laughs> but human emotion takes over right away when they start criticizing you and you get mad or upset. Yeah, especially acting. Acting is one of those uh, people really get touchy. I, I do sometimes and I have to remind myself. You're a performer, and everybody has their view and opinion, just like an athlete, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, being a, a Buffalo Bill fan, you know, I get a lot of uh, people that complain about our quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, and I'm the opposite, you know. But see, that's my view, you know. Like, I, well, I see potential if we have this and this and that. Um, so uh, it's just, it just, again, depending on other people's views and their feedback, but it's good to hear that, you know. Um, why did you want to share anything with that? Well, um, 
back when I actually was acting, it was pretty fun to act, and, well, like you said, it's... Acting is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. And if you can't take the criticism that the audience gives you, then you shouldn't be acting. Anytime, uh, yeah, that's that's true, because anytime you're doing a a service or a performance for somebody expect it you know if you're only doing something for yourself then you can't really criticize your own work you're gonna say oh this is good i like it whatever you know especially if like you're a chef you know if you're a chef and you're gonna make you're making food you're gonna tell yourself oh i like the way it came out sometimes you know but if you give it to somebody else they're gonna tell you what they they feel if they don't eat it that means they don't like it you know Um, but expect that if you're doing some kind of service or performance for somebody to view it or to um, comment on it or something, expect that because uh, not everybody's going to feel the same way you're feeling, uh, and especially for performing or entertainment, not everybody's going to feel exactly how you felt when you performed. You might feel like, oh, I did great, but to other people that are watching, they're going to be like, uh, they're going to find something, you know, like, oh, yeah, it was good, but, you know, you could have done better than this or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's good to hear because that's how you grow. You grow more as a performer. Same with uh, doing artwork. It's a double-edged sword, too. Yeah. So you might look look at it and say, that's great, but then others look at it and going, what, what is it? Yeah, it's like those <laughs> oh, famous so. paintings you see in yeah. uh, museums, you know, when you uh, uh, somebody who's all into art will look at it like, oh, it's speaking to me, or um, this is the greatest painting i ever seen. And I can go into it. Look, I'll be like, oh, it looks like a little kindergarten just threw painting on the wall. You know? <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, like I don't see anything. There. But it's just again, it's your view and your opinion on it. You know, um, but it's good. It's good to get that because again, you will never grow as a person as a performer if you don't have people telling you, oh, it was good or it wasn't good. Okay, you want to hear those things, and you have to be strong with that so you can grow. Yeah, I start learning to ask questions. Uh, it's something I didn't do before. I would yeah. just like get mad and you know be like, "What if they're talking about what?" Yeah. And now I'm asking, "Okay, if that was bad, what can I do better?" Mm-hmm. Or how, you know, and I do that in theater too. If I do stink something up, I expect someone to tell me, and I ask them, "Well, what can I do better?" Yeah. And I'll try to do next time the what they tell me to. Yeah. So like for me, um, I used to be, well, I still catch myself doing it. And you caught me a couple of times mm-hmm. uh, Well, I speak too fast and I slur a lot. And I, to me, it's because I just get excited about something and I just ramble, ramble, ramble. But I know what I'm saying, but you don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So I can get to a point where uh, if I keep talking and talking and I get too excited about something, I'll, I'll speak too fast and I start mumbling or rumbling or mixing words together nobody's going to understand what I'm saying. I will, but you won't. But the uh, the audience catches on to a lot of that. So even when I was doing speeches, they were tell they would tell me, like, you need to slow down on this because there was a part in there where you were sharing something and you got excited about it and you started to mumble. You started to, you started to slur your words and we didn't understand there's a certain part here, you know? So um, that was something where I kind of hit me a little bit kind of like oh okay do i have a speech problem or something you know Mm -hmm. but that was just something okay well i have to take it and work with it so every time i do a a performance or a show or something i try to remind myself to even when i get excited about something slow down a little bit you know especially if i get to a part where i'm you know it it takes a lot of energy and i want to go fast i still got to slow down and make sure that my speech is clear and enunciate when i when I speak, because then the audience is not going to understand, you know, but that's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's performers here. And even um, um, with your friends, you know, um, when you're you're speaking to people or your personality, when you're, you're, you're friends with people, um, there are some things that uh, you may not like about one person or do like about per- one person, you know, but that's common. You're not going to, you're not going to look at Melissa and say, Melissa, you're the perfect person, you know, or look at me like Carmel is a perfect person. You know, you're not going to find that, you know, but there are going to be your, your, uh, your, um, your pros and cons, I guess you would say uh, with a person, but in-house I think is a great opportunity to explore that where you get to 
try out new things and um, new skills, uh, especially for like yourself, Tim. And we have new performers that are trying to get on stage at the same time. It's a good opportunity to do that. And then you get people that know you, like counselors or friends. Um, they get to watch that, and they'll give you, you know, your feedback. So that way, when you do your shows, when you have like your spring shows or Christmas shows, um, you take that in, and now you're able to work on that and really give that to the to the audience. So. When I do uh, speeches, um, like in Sacramento with the recycling speech I did, I knew I read too fast and I wasn't connecting because the way people people weren't paying attention. And even if when I was trying to connect, I think the other speeches uh, kind of, you know, they, they did, um, they connected well with them enough where they just, okay, another speech kind of deal. Yeah. So, you know, but even though I think we did okay, I think it could have been better though. Yeah, that's good. You always tell yourself um, uh, you can always do better the next time. You know, if you just settle for that performance, um, you're going to, you're not gonna um, uh, find things within it that you can do better on. You know, is it your presentation? Is it your body? Is it your your connection? You know, uh, you can do a lot better. Even athletes are the same way. Whether uh, Michael Jordan never looked at a year where he was number one and just settled for that. You know, or LeBron James or anybody of them. You know, um, they always told themselves like. Yeah, people look at me as number one, but I want to be better. Look be at Tom Brady. He's 40 years old and still playing quarterback for New England. Jeez. And he still just watches his film like he's a rookie. Yeah. And he's like MVP every year, and he keeps telling himself, I didn't have a good year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and he, that, that's why he's able to keep performing at a high level every single year because every single year he plays, everybody looks at him as, oh, he's MVP. He's MVP, MVP. And he, but he looks at himself like, no, I'm not. I had a bad year. And he, he wants to work on other things that he can get better. And that's why he keeps doing good every single year because he's not settling for that. And he so, takes his time on things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, even in the game, that offensive line, I'm so jealous of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys, as um, clients of the Creative Center, even if you're not performed or not for in-house shows, do you guys feel like that is a good idea to have like in-house shows at the Creative Center or just do completely just – um, you know, our productions that we have spring and Christmas. Do you guys have any feedback on that? If that's a good idea to keep doing that having or having it just once a year? How do you guys feel about that? I would say it's a very good idea, especially for those who are not that particular with either the acting scene or any much. It's, it'll be a good practice to at least uh, discover those. Or at least polish up those so you, it doesn't get rusty near the end, I guess. Because even last time, you you were part of the, the summer one, right? And part you, of it on the, the 1950s Grease Lightning. Yeah, but there was I think there was one performance where you did a speech. Was that a part of an in-house? I don't remember. Your, it was, was that it, something different? It's something different. It's called The Outcast. Okay. That was an in-house? Yeah, that was in the in-house somewhere last year. I think it was a summer, yeah. It is. Summer. I just remember that performance, and I knew that something like that was you were exploring something new and trying something out. You never with, done anything uh, like that, you know? with three people. Yeah, Edward. Edward was part of it. Carlos, Carlos. and the other Christian. Yeah. yeah. So even something like that, where you had uh, veteran performers there doing their thing, mm -hmm. but it uh, it helped you explore something that you wanted to try, and that's what I feel like. That's why I say like in house gives that opportunity and i'm pretty sure after you did that um you got some feedback from either some counselors or um, friends about your performance so that's kind of mm -hmm. like how you you grow you know yeah and you felt more confident when you did for uh the christmas show because mm -hmm. you've done it already before so the african scripture yeah <laughs> does anybody else have any feedback melissa i i i'm i'm in my with me show um me um um i had five people uh, show me do you remember who they were corey me if uh red uh Chiron, um uh Tona, and maybe me do you i can trying to trying to remember what show it was what what's um what were you guys doing dance was it a dance yeah 
It was the Christmas around the world she was talking about. It was the Christmas around the world? Yeah. Where, That's what she's talking about. She was what? in the Chinese. Oh, yeah. okay. Chinese. Why, why yeah. am I going blank? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. But even for yourself, Melissa, the, the, the experiences that you do for in-house helps you prepare for a big show like the Christmas show. You know, because there was, I think, last year you did some... Last week. You did some, well, you did some dancing for in-house. I mean, in dance, um, yeah. yeah. And then uh, last year, I'm telling it uh, with... Uh, um, remember that time uh, uh, Kim, um, um, we uh, to that, and I didn't do it, uh, you know what? I remember Greece. Yeah, we. Yeah, you were part of me, there. Me, me, Lowy. Yeah. So, yeah, and Kim and Eva. Mm-hmm. But you've done shows before. Yeah. Before that, so you, you're getting that feeling, that experience. But the in-house is very. Uh, it's one of those times where you really get to try something out there, you know. So that's good. Um, okay, cool. So we only have a few minutes left, but I do want to talk about. Uh, the spring production okay um, a lot of you guys out there kind of have an idea of what we're doing um, but we want to give you something completely different for the spring show um, it is um, kind of a Wizard of Oz type concept but it's gonna be all original music uh, all original characters with names um, but you will recognize uh, a lot of the characters, and you're gonna think Wizard of Oz, even though it's not Wizard of Oz. But we are using the theme and concept of the of, um, of the play in the movie. But um, how do you guys feel about that? When you guys, uh, it's like creating a alternate version of Wizard of Oz, or or a different take of Wizard of Oz. How do you guys feel like doing something like that, where it's like completely original, a new, fresh take to it's, I like to call it the reboot <laughs> in a way, you know, or your version or remake of it. Christian? Yeah, I would say it's like it's sort of like the remix of the original concept with our own spin on it. Mm. And in actuality, I'm working on the concept art for that new uh, Wizard of Oz-like uh, mm. play. It's kind of like the Christmas Carol in a way, uh, but we called it a, cre- a creative center Christmas Carol. So if people watch the, the play, they know, it's, okay, it's Christmas Carol. And they follow along with it, you know, but we didn't use um, the name Scrooge or any of that, you know, so everybody had an idea, even like the the G pass and dark futures, like they had an idea who they were, but we didn't use the names, but it's something similar to that where we're trying to be really original with it. Tim? I think it's, it's going to be fun. Um, are we going to use our own voices or are we going to do some uh, voiceover? No, we want to do it live. Yeah, so that's why with the script that we're working on, um, it's going to be basic and simple enough where you guys are not having to memorize too much, um, but really focused more on presenting uh, in a live way, you know. Um, And you'll feel more confident, too, when you're doing a show live when knowing that you don't have too much to say and you'll get into the character a little bit more. So that's what we want to do. I mean, we're mixing it up here with a performing arts team where Kevin is coming up with original music for each of the characters um, JP is going to come up with uh, some yeah. crazy choreography for a character too and some of the scenes so it's going to be really full out musical um, uh, dance choreography with, with some acting in there because you do, are going to portray your lines and you are going to say your lines live uh, but you'll feel confident of going on stage and saying your lines because you're not going to have too much to say but it, it's going to be fun I, I really feel um uh, this take a new version of it um, it's gonna uh, kind of showcase what you guys have as performers too because um, you'll you when you're doing it live people are gonna notice that too like oh it's not audio audio recorded you guys are actually doing this live so they're gonna look at you as performers and they're gonna say hey you guys are taking a, a step another level when it comes to your performance so we used to do this back in the day, actually. Um, so, like, with me, it's kind of nothing new. Um, just remembering doing it with... Uh, Jonathan, uh, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And uh, Mark and Nick and Ginger, we all... Yeah, we used to do it yeah. live. 
I remember seeing that, and it's going to be something similar to that, where you guys are not having too much, you know, dialogue or anything, but you guys are doing it live. Everybody were there was live, you know. So we want to make it that way where um, it, it's yeah. No. Alrighty, cool. So that will do it for today's episode of the Creator Center Talk Show, and um, we're hope hopefully uh, next week uh, we want to bring in a, a guest into our program. So that way we have a special guest uh, to interview too for this uh, for the Creator Center Talk Show. So, but until then, we want to thank everybody for tuning in, and everybody here at the table says bye. Bye. bye.